For this tutorial, we'll explore how to digitize a vinyl LP and convert it to an audio CD or a set of MP3 files. Choose File, New. This opens the settings for a new empty WAV file window. Since your goal is to create an audio CD, set the sample rate to 44,100 and set the bit depth to 16. These are the specifications for an audio CD. Set the channels to 2 for a stereo recording. Click OK. Click the Record button. This opens the Record window. The audio input selection of the window will automatically detect the inputs you are using for your turntable's output. If this is not correct, click the drop down arrow and select the correct inputs. Play the record and observe the recording level meters. If the level is too high or too low, click on the audio input button to open the input and level automation window. Move this window so that you can see the meters. Click and drag the volume fader to adjust the level. Click OK to save these settings and stop the turntable. Restart the turntable at the beginning of the record. Click the record button and start playback of the turntable. At the end of side 1, click the pause button. Turn the record over. Click pause again to resume recording and start the turntable. Click stop to end recording. Click the close button to close the record window and you will see the waveform of the vinyl you have recorded. Notice there is a lot of silence and a couple of pops at the beginning of the recording while we waited for the record to start. We don't want that. There is also a big pop between tracks 1 and 2 we need to get rid of. Highlight from the beginning to just before the first track waveform and delete it. Next, zoom in on the pop between tracks 1 and 2 and delete that. Next, choose Tools, Audio Restoration. There are a number of tools here to help you clean up and restore your vinyl recording. The Clicker, the Crackler, will help remove the normal click and crackle you find in old vinyl records. The Hisser might also come in handy to remove the hiss from an old cassette tape or reel-to-reel -reel recording. Each of these has presets to get you started and you can adjust from there as needed. Next we need to set the markers that the CD player will use to locate the various tracks on the CD. We'll place a marker for each track. Place the cursor at the beginning of track 1 and click the Set CD Track Index button located in the toolbar at the bottom of the SoundForge interface. Notice that the marker jumped to the beginning of the file. The first CD marker must be at the beginning of the file, not just the beginning of the first track. Place the cursor at the beginning of track 2 and click the Set CD Track Index button to place a CD marker there. In the same manner, place a marker for tracks 3 and 4. Place the cursor at the end of the last track and click the Set CD End Index button to mark the CD end. We can add metadata to each marker recording information such as title, artist, songwriter, genre, and more. Open the CD Index Manager in the Regions list and click the CD Text button. In the Selection window, we see that Disc Album is selected and all the fields below correspond to the Disc Album information. Click Track 1 in the Selection window. Now all the information entered will correspond to the first track. Fill out the fields with the proper information and click OK to close the CD Text MP3 ID Editor window and then click OK to close the Marker CD Index Manager. To demonstrate the end result, we'll open a file where all the metadata has been entered. The next step is to burn a CD. Put a writable CD in your CD drive and choose Tools Burn Audio CD. You are presented with three options. Dithering, Show TOC, Table of Contents, and Export TOC. For the most part, dithering is only required when reducing the number of bits used to represent a signal. For instance, if you had recorded and mixed in 24-bit and then converted the files to 16-bit, which is the CD specification, you would need to apply dithering. If you have applied a lot of effects or performed drastic restoration, this might call for dithering as well. Click on Show TOC, Table of Contents, to see the metadata that we entered in the last step. This information will be written to the disk. Close the Table of Contents for CD window. 
click Export TOC. Some CD replication houses may require a TOC file. Using this export option, you could save the TOC file and send it to the replicator. Close the project Save As window. Back in the Make CD window, click on Burn MP3 CD DVD. This process will create an MP3 file for each track and burn them to either a CD or DVD. This is a different format than an audio CD and is considered a data CD or DVD. Not all audio CD players are capable of playing a data disc. Click the MP3 drop-down list and note that you can also pick from several other formats to burn a collection of files to CD or DVD. With MP3 selected, click on Format Options. This enables you to choose different bitrate and sampling rates. Each of the file type choices, MP3, WMA, OGG Vorbis, FLAC, and AAC will provide different format options. All you need to do is to make sure you have a CD or DVD in your drive and click the Burn CD button.